The first question you s was perhaps, what is the meaning of the purity of heart? Purity of right, heart. Right. Okay. You see, the purity of heart is not a religious term belonging to a certain religion of a certain place or a certain area or time. Purity of heart has always been the subject and the most essential subject of discussion of all such faiths which call, term themselves as religions, even those who do not believe in God or apparently do not believe in God, like Buddhists, like Jainists and some others, who have gone away from, like uh, the, the philosophies of Taoism, etc., they're also referred to as godless philosophies. Although I disagree with that, that's a different thing altogether. What I mean to say is, as they present religion, the central point is always purification of heart. How can you meet this end? By what means? It is there that the, the religious teachings differ. Those who believe in God, they also believe that without your coming into some sort of communion with God, purification of heart cannot be achieved. To live with God, to live in God, means that you follow his attributes, such attributes which are within the human capacity to follow and acquire. So this also explains the meaning of man having been created after the nature of God. God has created man ultimately to become good. If the basic fundamental design of man was not good, it would not have been possible for man ever to become good. So the purity of heart is to return to the original design. That is why even those religions who do not believe in God, they somehow acquire this. What they have to do is, they have to delve deeper into their own nature. And they reach the same ultimate end of discovering an innate goodness in all human beings. So they say, we have discovered the secret from within us. The religion says, no. In that exercise, you may even be misled by your own views and thoughts and cultural influences and the influences of the age, and you may think that you have reached the truth, but it has to be verified from an outer truth, by an outer, outer truth. Without that, there cannot be a certainty regarding your having reached the source of truth or purification. In this regard, Islam is, has a very clear attitude and very logical and sensible attitude. In fact, you can't do away with it in any form. You have to agree because it's so logical. The founder of Ahmadiyya community, Hazrat Masih Madhari Salatu Islam, has written volumes on this subject, purity of heart. And he has likened it to all human faculties, which are, which are all of them dependent on an outer reality which correlates with them. For instance, if the eyes are good and the sight is perfect and healthy, if there is no sun shining, no light coming from the heaven, they can't see. So inner truth is only to the extent of your being capable of receiving the outer truth. The ears can be absolutely healthy and perfect. Yet if there is no vibration in the air, no sound, they won't hear anything. Taste, of course we can taste things if we are healthy, but there, is something, there must be something to create the taste. Empty mouth and empty stomach cannot taste anything. So this is the explanation provide, prov put forward by Hazrat Musi Madhara Salaam the founder of the Ahmadiyya community, in relation to inner truth and outer truth and their interrelationship. So the purity of heart is the sum total of these five 
senses where they ultimately converge and ultimately create one single entity. If all the five senses are pure and healthy, and if they are in communion with the outer sources which are corresponding to them, then the heart is purified without a shadow of doubt. Without it, it may be on way to purification. It may be innocent. But perfect purification, a purposeful, purposeful purification cannot be achieved without the meeting together of inner truth and outer truth. That is what we understand by these, these terms, and I hope this will um, also be acceptable to many.